So we are ready. My game is already. The lobby is already set up. Shout out to Indy, who's always quick and on point. A PVT between a very good TVP player and a man who perhaps is the favorite just based on historic achievements in MMR Polish art. I think it's a fun one, actually. Fion says 45 months. That's a long time. It is a long time, Fion. Big shout out to Nugwar for that one, eh? How many years of Nugwar subs is that, mate? Oceanborn guys, 100 bucks for the winner, 25 for the loser, the bracket link is finally updated, I'm sorry I was a bit slow with that, but it's been a really crazy month with so much Starcraft, so much streaming, a lot of uh, craziness in our live offline events and whatnot, I'm running on fumes, so we'll get there. Let's get it on! Round 1, fight! The bottom right side of Oceanborn, we are looking at the main base of our Polish Protoss uh, representing the Platinum Heroes, not the same as Platinum Esports, even though they are affiliated with each other. This is Art, a man who personally reached out to me, snuck in those DMs, and he said, Roddy, whenever you have a spot, I want to play in the BBB again. And I actually needed one. So I was like, hey, <laughs> this Friday, does that work? It was a bit short notice. And he said, absolutely. Top left side, a man who has told me in the past that he's always down to play. I don't even need to ask. He will always be available. Hailing from Russia, a very good TVP player. He's aggressive, he's fun, but his late game is pretty good as well. It's Nikorak. And this man is a proper grinder. Like, he may not be the biggest name in Europe. He may not be mega successful. But he plays so much. I do really respect the grind and the hustle that he puts in. Because he's never been, like, the absolute top upper echelon of European StarCraft, but... He's trying so hard to make that final step and his MMR is impressive, he's constantly over 6k. And I like uh, I like seeing players like this, they deserve it. Hmm. Thank you, raise the TL matey, that's very sweet of you, giving 10 buckies. I have disabled all my alerts whenever I'm casting uh, these best of fives. Because I want the focus to be on the games and I don't sometimes there is craziness, which is obviously really good for me as a streamer. But I also don't want to ruin your viewing experience. But I obviously get, keep an eye on my activity feed and give some shoutouts. So thank you to Razor DL, really appreciate it, mate. Proxy Factory, guys. So we have a barracks at home, we have a marine opening, we have a CC on the low ground. But we also have a proxy factory. That's, uh, that's quite the build. Does this mean he's gonna go for a proxy stopper as well? But the Platinum Heroes art is scouting and he even right clicked and he's gonna see the factory at a very good moment. But maybe it's like a split second too late. I mean, Spidey Sense is off the charge. No, it's just a, a cyclone. Whatever it was going to be, I don't think it will be anymore. This is an unfortunate opening for Nikara. Do you trade games with Nico on the ladder? I used to, but these days he kind of bobs me. Like, I uh, I stagnated or even got a bit worse just because I got so busy with casting and traveling. Yeah, and this man is just a grinder. I think he's very good right now. Once in a blue moon, I can still obviously steal a game, right? If I have a good start with Phoenix Zealot, I know how to close games out. But he is uh, he's better than me at this point. And if we ever are both maxed out, it's a bad time for me. Because that man is incredibly good with 2-2 or 3-3 bio and ghosts and vikings and lips. I do not do well when we are both maxed out. Even if you give me an army with carriers and whatnot. Yeah, the double battery is very safe. But that's, this doesn't have to be too bad for Nikrak, as long as he's not too stubborn about still going for the initial planned aggression. Uh, okay, it should go down, right? It should go down, it will go down. It's actually not too bad for uh, Nikrak. Only lost one marine there. One marine for an adept. That is a trade he will gladly take. I don't think he's going to be able to accomplish too much here. Surprising, by the way, that Art went for the robo. I kind of think this is a bit of an overreaction. Double shield battery and robo. I don't love this anywhere near as much as I feel like we should love it for Art. Who obviously scouted the factory at a picture perfect moment, had a very good read on the situation. Goes for a quick Robo Bay. If this is for uh, Ravens or. Like Ravens with Inference Matrix would be sick here, Cloak Banshee, so so. 
you think Ravens would be amazing? I kind of like it for uh, Nick Rakt. Oh, it was an old school clan in StarCraft and Brute War. I, I know very little about Brute War. I know that my boy Red was good. I know that it makes Adi Mactosis very mad. I know they love Mario Erotica. I know Aniac yaps about Brute War as much as he yaps about Oklahoma being awesome. That's, that's pretty much all I know. Uh, do exclamation mark Basilisk Discord, punk ass biatch. If you do that, that's the username, by the way, for the people who watch the VOD. I did not just call somebody a punk ass biatch, but that's his username. If you do exclamation mark Basilisk Discord, there is a Discord you guys can join. And if you have any questions about what Basilisk does, what their goals are for the future, where they come from, you can always join the Discord and you can talk to some of my bosses. And they are incredibly nice and they will have an answer for everything that you ask for. Now the big bosses are kind of busy, but there's always Jeff lurking in the shadows and he's got a lot of answers for you too. Sometimes I forget that if chat is not on screen, people might get very confused about the things that I say. Which is okay, that's the way we do it on the live stream, but... If you're just watching this VOD, and I know that people watch these VODs, because I had people coming up to me in Dallas saying like, Oh, I love the big brain boss, but I can never watch it live because I'm always at work, but something i really enjoy watching back if they just hear me call somebody a punk ass biatch they might be like wow roddy was in a bad mood man <laughs> like no 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 that's not what it is guys that's his username <laughs> you have bosses when it comes to bass this guy do i've obviously been a independent streamer for a long time uh, but these days i'm not just no longer writing solo and i'm very very happy that i'm a part of bass that i have them on my side it's been a a 10 out of 10 journey. It's been an 11 out of 10 journey for me. Without Bastard, it would be a whole lot harder for me to be happy with how everything goes in StarCraft 2. We've got two Cyclones and two Marauders. Art has not been able to find a whole lot of damage yet with these four Stalkers in the Prism. Nikolak has got a pretty good army, but he never went for like the Banshees or the Ravens that I mentioned. So Attacking into Double Colossus with a battery, Sentries, Extended Thermal Lens is still going to be hard. Oh, they're still here finding additional damage with his four stalkers. Unless he's even out microing the Marauders. Now there are Metavex to the rescue. But this is not a fight that Nikrok can take. What Nikrok can do is try to attack where these units are not. He doesn't have to say that. That is true. I don't have to say anything. But <laughs> I, uh, I will gladly say it. Mm. This double drop is not going to do a whole lot. Nikrak probably thinking about Yolo simming this army on top of the batteries, but can't really do that either. Good defense by Art. This is one of these moments where if he makes... Well, well I just flipped over my mouse, guys. <laughs> I've never done that. If you are out of position one time, terribly out of position, it can be game-ending damage immediately. I like that very quick second po star point by Nikrak, who is setting up a double drop into the natural, but there is still an army waiting for him there. There's just no opening. Art right, on three bases, I think it's too solid. You're not going to crack him on three bases. Art right, does need to be careful here. Do not blink forward, mate. Whatever you do. <laughs> if he would have made a blind forward blink there to get on top of these medivacs, he would have been in trouble. No, don't worry about that thing. <laughs> you call yourself whatever way you want to call. I just had to clarify that for the people who are not reading chat. No, it's absolutely not needed. If you like that username, go for it. As long as you behave in my channel, you're more than welcome. We have a Ghost Academy on the way, and that second star put is up and rolling. Is it connected to a reactor? Not quite. It will soon. At the moment, though, guys, zero Vikings. If Art can grab all of his units right now and go to the other side of the map, triple Colossus and a Prism against zero Vikings... This is going to be very, very scary for Nikarat. <laughs> Nikarat needs to buy time. He's got a lot of firepower, and obviously, uh, Art still needs to be careful. Marines and Marauders are thinking about just taking this fight. He steams in so deep as he's trying to get on top of the Colossus. He needs to kill the War Prism, I think. Vikings are here. The Vikings are going to prioritize. 
the prism. Marauders were going forward for one of the Colossus. All right, at least the prism is dead. And every great Terran hold starts with sniping the prism as the Fusel is still leading the charge. And after the prism, we can't warp in any more stalkers. That is a sick hold by Nicarag. Actually, incredibly well done. It looked very YOLO, man, when he stepped forward with all those buy units into Guardian Shield, Zealous, Triple Colossus. I wasn't too certain about that, but that is an incredibly impressive hold. Well done. My art is well, like, well, okay, we still have four bases. We've got some Archons on the way. It is all good. Sniping the Prism was key there. If he doesn't snipe the Prism, the man picks up the Colossus one or two times, warps in a few Stalkers, and it's game over. Because the Marauders were running for the hills. <laughs> the follow-up push with five Archons is going to be a bit scary. But that Ghost Academy was rather quick. We already have two Ghosts out on the map. Third one is about to pop. Three MPs is not everything you need. There's also a Disruptor that has potential. Ooh, this Observer, by the way, is a bit too good. This Observer is a little bit too good. Nikrok might actually see the army here. Oh. Realizes that his opponent had vision of him while well, he didn't. Throws down a scan, kills the Ops immediately. Now these armies are kind of uh, outmaneuvering each other. I'm not sure who I favor this for. Basically, Art, his entire main army is on the top side. This is actually going to turn into a good old fashioned base trade. The nice thing for Art though is that it starts while he's already on top of the production. Here is that Archon Disrupt the Colossus army. These SCVs are going to go to the meat grinder. Zealous are already in the main and Nikarak is forced to turn around. I want to take a quick look at Rico, guys. Rico is not available yet. Rico is absolutely not available yet. Now that Nova is annoying. So Art is going to find crazy, crazy, crazy economic damage. But I think he's also going to get absolutely blasted in the army fight. Now the question is, does Nikarak win this convincingly enough to then have an army that's big enough to end it on the other side of the map? And I think after losing all those Vikings, the answer to the question is no. 53 arms supply against 45 is way too close. Uh, unlucky for Nikolak. Unlucky. The man missed his army, moved out of position. GG gets called. Art takes the 1 0 lead after scouting that proxy factory early on. Hmm. That's a shame. Because I actually kind of like Nikolak's army there. And Art, I think, only makes that move out because he believes there are no ghosts. But they were ghosts, and he did see them at one point. He's kind of missed it. Nikarak missed Art, Art missed Nikarak, but because the prism was already in the natural and then into the main base, that just went way better for the Polish brothers. Fun game though. <laughs> think you think about Nikarat? It's close enough, mate. That is close enough. Uh, game two is going to be played on post youth. How's the tan, by the way, guys? Do I look tanned? Or is there still work to be done? Well, I feel like over the last few days, I got a decent amount of sunshine. Not as much as I would have liked to, but still. I feel like uh, we even had a, a tiny beach day when the Netherlands played Austria. I think I did the Kung Fu... What did I do? When, when did we play Austria? I did something in the morning, and then we went to the beach for like two, three hours. It was nice, sunny. And then I was actually able to watch the Netherlands on my phone because I couldn't get inside anymore. It was too busy. My phone had a 25 second delay. It was horrible. Then apparently it was the worst game we've played as well in a long time. So it was extra horrible. But it all worked out. 4D on the water chess. Now we got the easy bracket and I'm going to win the Euros, baby. Round two. Fight! In the bottom left side of Post Youth, we are looking at the main base of the man that's representing the Platinum Heroes, taking the 1-0 lead. It's Polish Art going Nexus first here, by the way. Nexus first. Top right side, a man who actually does love Proxy Barracks, so this is incredibly risky, because if he would have gone for a Proxy Barracks, I want to say it's game over. But he doesn't. The Barracks is at home, that's unlucky. Also Platinum Heroes, it's Nicarak. Romania Holland 2-1. I, I can see us all being 2-1 at halftime and then winning the match 5-1. I think that's possible, mate. If that's your prediction, I think it's a reasonable prediction. 
I expect us to score at a bare minimum four goals against Romania. Perhaps five or six. We are going to make a statement. And after the round of 16, everyone will be talking about the Dutch. And how we're going to win the Euros. I can't wait. Hmm? We'll see about that. We absolutely will. I'm very confident. No STV scout, by the way, for Nikorak, so he's got absolutely no idea that this was indeed a Nexus first. Hmm. <laughs> Lurker, that's funny. No, we're gonna get revenge on budget Germany, mate. We just let them win the irrelevant match. It's kind of like they played us on a barcode on the ladder, but now we're about to play a tournament and we know that they're playing them. Netherlands is gonna smack. Nikolak sees this uh, setup. I wonder actually if this tells him everything. If he would have shown up like a split second earlier, he would have known. This can't get up anywhere. Look at art. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, and he can't see the Nexus. Uh, can you drop a grenade here and bounce yourself over? I wonder if that's possible. I don't think you want to go all the way, uh, Theatrix, but I think what you can do is send like four probes and right click them on the gold. I think that's totally fine. Mm. Uh, in the mix, mate, I hope for a great match. I actually, uh, I like Romania. Obviously, I was cheering for them because I had Cuckoo here. Finally gets cancelled, but... Okay, Nikola gets in he sees a fully saturated uh, natural but still doesn't really get a great scout off i wonder if he has even able to be figure out or if he's been able to figure out that this was nexus first like he's probably confused that's a good scout now by the way because he sees the robo and the twilight and maybe the timing of those two buildings actually uh, puts two and two together and now he knows not a whole lot he can do about it but he's got a two on one opening which i like to think is good against nexus first but it's also one of these can be uh, game winning immediately. If it doesn't work out, he's in serious trouble. At the LDR, I've been enjoying the matches of Romania. I watched, I think, all three games of Romania. Not everything of Belgium, but they played very well against Ukraine and they scored some bangers. And I think the last game was obviously a bit of a weird one, right? Because the draw was good enough for them. But I feel like they played well. But I think the Netherlands is going to play really good. Well, A third barracks on the way for Nikrak. This first move out, guys, is incredibly important for our Russian Terran as he uses a boost. These Marines have potential, but if they get one shot at small, they are still inside of the matter of fact. One good blink is perhaps all it takes for R to already take a 2 0 lead. Poor Lukaku, mate. I feel sad for Lukaku. Because he is obviously a good player and he has scored some amazing goals in his career. This is a big observer. That man is so unlucky whenever he plays for Belgium. A blink is done and Stim is done as the storm is on the way. That one Reaper, by the way, is actually nice because it's going to absorb some uh, shots. Marine uh, Stim forward. I gotta say, the micro is actually pretty good on the side of Art and Artus. A very good read on this fight. I was wondering if he had to blink everything back or not, or if he was going to blink them back one by one, but he just kind of started kiting. He wasn't too worried about the DPS of those Marines. And he had a very good read on all of it. It was actually just a perfect trade, right? The man killed six Marines, lost one Stalker. You can't be unhappy with that. Predictions for Germany, Denmark. I think Denmark wins like 3-0, maybe 3-1 if Germany is lucky. Nah, I'm kidding. I think Germany wins. Germany is pretty good. And Denmark has been overwhel uh, underwhelming. So. I think Germany 3-0 actually. That's my real prediction. Seven probes as Nikodok finds his first proper opening in the series. Gets 11 even. Kills the pilot in two. Art with only a couple of blink stalkers. Yeah, you can fight Marines without combat shield and plus one. But if you put a couple of Marauders in the mix, it becomes a completely different ball game. Another pro falls. Art really does not want to lose this expand. I Templars are exposed. They have Storm, but we didn't use it. I guess we were just like one or two energy points short. It is a hold in the end. He kills a lot of bio, but it's kind of one of these holds, and we have to ask ourselves the cast question. 
At what cost? At the cost of a lot of probes, the pylon, we're gonna lose this observer too. And Nikos being very good about throwing down those scans and picking up those observers. Prediction, I think France is gonna beat Belgium. I don't know what it is about Belgium. They clearly have amazing players, but the vibe just isn't there, right? It just feels that they're never happy with each other. They haven't been happy with each other for a long time, and uh, I don't see them suddenly surprise and beat France. It'd be awesome if they can somehow get lucky and connect the dots and play a great game, but I don't know what it is with Belgium. They just seem like a very uh, unhappy bunch. Not a scan, kills another observer. High Templar is looking for a big storm. Nikodok enjoying a economic advantage. All he needs to do is wait for a couple of high, uh, couple of ghosts to EMP those High Templars. If he does, if he does that, he's gonna be fine. Yeah, steep. Or see real that that has been shocking. I also find it absolutely unexplainable that with that kind of a team in three games you haven't scored a normal goal. <laughs> But France will score goals. Hello. Tiny Storm drop. Kills six SCVs actually. It's a little bit more than I thought he was going to get there. But still need to be careful. Stalkers are going to get on top of the Sensor Tower. That's a kill as well. Alright. Alright, it's fighting back. Which outsider is going to make it into the quarters? You know what? Germany. As a tiny football nation without any real accomplishments and an underwhelming performance in the last 10 years, I can see them sneak into the quarterfinals. And I'd be proud of my eastern neighbors. One more High Templar on the SUVs. This one does not uh, get six. Might get one. Auto attack one time and one time only. No. <laughs> I was really hoping for the auto attack there. Who does uh, Georgia play? Georgia plays somebody good now, isn't it Spain? Then they're not beating Spain, man. <laughs> ah, no, that's not happening. Spain is actually, uh, I think, pretty damn good. The only nation that hasn't really fumbled yet. It's kind of always play well. Stalker, Sniper, Viking, as Nikorak is trying to just reduce the map vision and map presence that Art has. Art loss at War Prism actually means that landing big storms is going to be a bit more difficult. Yeah, I miss Sweden as well, Sweet Loss. The Swedish fans are also always cool, they bring a good vibe. Hopefully, in a couple of years. Nikodok attacking two bases at once, lands a little EMP, but it seems like Art still has enough units to actually push the Russian Terran back once more. Nikodok going up to four bases on location. That's a little bit ambitious. If we are losing expensive units here like Gulls, and that is what he's doing, and now he's kind of overstimming. These Zellos are one or two hits away from five, killing like five more bio units. And if he loses this base, he's actually in trouble. That'd be a shame. Because the man was in such a good spot after that first stim into the third base where he killed all those probes. Bit of a bang again between these two. It's still early, but it has potential. I think at this point. They should actually just increase the Euros to 32 nations. And I know that makes the qualifier silly and I know that makes it seem like almost everybody is there. But this stupid system with like 4 out of 6 third place finishes advance, I think it kills all the hype of the final play days anyway. Everybody is just playing it safe and like aiming for a point. It's just kind of lame. And with 8 more countries, you know, I can think of 8 countries that would do alright in the Euros. So let's just do that. I'm gonna maybe I'll stay up to watch USA against uh, Uruguay. I think that's gonna be a banger. I want to see the LeBron James of soccer do his thing. Is he playing, guys? <laughs> Four more Vikings on the way. All right, Art needs to be careful because he just kind of split up his army and he loses a Colossus. One of the downsides of having two High Templars inside of your prism is obviously that you cannot go for any pickups. Well, Nova, but I think the Marauders can kill it. Nope, doesn't want to stay there and fight. Storm drop on the SCVs again. Well, nine SCVs, not bad, but it's also annoying to lose prism after prism after prism. 
Yeah, USA played against Bolivia. They won, but everybody's beating Bolivia. I mean, yesterday they played Panama and they lost. So they've got one more match and they need to beat Uruguay. Good luck with that. But I'll be cheering. I'll be whipping out my flag, stars and stripes. I'll stand up for the anthem. And I hope that Pulisic can carry. Or Dest. Marauders and Marine here taking a decent fight. Two, two upgrades for both. This is obviously where Mad Effect support matters a lot. As the Vikings have melted another Colossus and artist supply. And suddenly just kind of plummeting. Loses a lot on the right, loses a lot on the left. And we'd love to see Nikola go for at least this fourth base. This army needs to be careful because we are two storms away from losing AD supply. But if we can just prevent that, we can go to the bottom right, mate. There was a free Nexus there that we could have cancelled. Isn't it funny how Art looks powerful when he's down 56 army supply? Cheering for Uruguay? No. I wouldn't want to cheer against America in soccer. Uruguay is going to advance anyway. I would prefer to see America and the players over Panama. I don't have much passion for Panama. <laughs> nice EMP on the High Templar. Art on 63 armies of like It's the 120 from Nikarak. Nikarak is stimming a little much, but hey, at least he's getting a kill on that very important base. He's going to find the probes as well. They were hiding in the corner, but there was nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. And this could be a game deciding fight. Oh, the storm is big, but there is a flank. The flank from the top right is always going to make this a good fight for the Terran. And no three zeros today in the big rain bouts as Nikorok steams down this ramp. Wins game two on post the youth. Let's go. We're all tied up. Solid set of games today. It's like not the biggest names that we can find in the foreign scene, but these have definitely been, I think, very fun games back and forth. Community Starcraft with Pi and Cyril. After that, a fun series between Aristori and Hydra. And now I think an excellent start to Art against Nikorak. Who is the favorite? I think most pros would tell you that Polish Art is a favorite over Nikorak. But I also think a lot of pros sleep on Nikorak. Especially in Nikorak is TVP. I think Nikorak is excellent in TVP. So I think most pros and Aligalak would... Uh, I don't know what Aligalak tells you guys. So... If I have to guess, I would say that in a best of five, it is like 62% likely or something that Polish art wins and 38% for Nikorak, but I believe in Nikorak. Roddy, you miss watching live play? Then I recommend you start watching an Italian Zerg called Rainer. He's a better version. Who's better, Polish art or Russian art? It's actually kind of close. They're both very good, but Polish art is a bit better. Uh, yes, Bellium, it is. I would say it is. Thank you, Illustrated, for the four months. <laughs> it wouldn't be a Copa America if there are not a whole bunch of red cards being thrown around. Huh. If there is a game without a red card, is it even Copa America? And to be fair, Turkey against uh, Czech Republic also had a crazy amount of yellows and red. They had even more yellows than in that World Cup game between the Netherlands and Portugal. But we had more red cards. Oh. Round three. Fight. Top left side of site at Delta. We are looking at the main base of a man from Poland who's been around for a long time representing Platinum Heroes. It's art. Apparently a fan of Zest. Yeah, hey Rudy, they had it very early. Kind of like the Czech Republic did. It's fascinating, right, how that's possible. And actually, if you look at how well the Czech Republic played with 10 guys, they probably could have won that 11 against 11. Now, I, I think it's kind of cool that Turkey advanced, and I will be probably rooting for Turkey against Austria. Because I really like Kukshu and the young guy that plays for Madrid. He seems fun, so... Let's see. The bottom right side... Of a site at Delta. We're looking at the main base of, in my eyes, one of the better TVP players in Europe. He may not be that famous, but he's excellent. It's Nikorak. My red card was BS, at least one of them. I mean, your first guy got two times yellow. And I forgot what happened for the first yellow, but I know that the commentator said it was very silly and unnecessary. Like, football is funny. Because sometimes you see players just battle for the ball. And then one guy comes in with his foot, and then the other guy, his foot is just right 
right there like a millisecond earlier and then all of a sudden instead of hitting the ball you hit his foot and it looks like a very dirty tackle well i don't know maybe it's the softy in me but i just very often believe that that is really not their intention because it goes so quick and then you play it in slow motion and it's like oh that's gnarly but like i i, I really don't see any world by this guy from the czech republic in minute 18 with a yellow card on a, on his resume already it's like ah, oh, i'm gonna go ahead and step on his foot right now like why would he do that i i really don't think that's on purpose yeah it's just unlucky right timing is everything like i agree it was a yellow razor tl but it's also sad because i really don't think he meant to do that it's like the game goes so quick and then we watch the slow motion and they slow it down to like 0.25 speed and then it's like a gnarly deck and you're like oh okay that's gnarly but there's no way that he meant to do that mm. that was not even a yellow uh andrew neither Ju young didn't even deserve yellow for that we got robbed but it's okay grand finals euro 2024 14th of july berlin spain against the netherlands we're gonna get revenge, baby. We're gonna bring it home. And Nigel de Jong will run on the pitch after the full time whistle. <laughs> and deliver another karate kick. <laughs> Alright, sorry. The Reaper has gone down. What did Nicarag see with his Reaper? Not a whole lot. He saw a pylon. It's nice to know there is a pylon, but that's not exactly why we're building a Reaper. Nikolak is going for the classic, a 4 Hellion drop. Now, what has Art seen? Art has not seen a whole lot either. So what I'm going to do right now, guys, is I'm going to follow the first person view of Art for a little bit. Art has no shield batteries. Uh, the Oracle is flying out in the top right. You guys see the mini? Wow, he turns around. That's surprising. Uh, why does the man turn around? It's actually it's kind of weird how R turns around here. I wonder what he's expecting, what he has. He hasn't seen anything. Maybe it was just the scout, right? Maybe this is something he always does. Okay, he's a little bit out of position regardless. I, and he's already losing seven probes. So he was perhaps expecting this knowing that he's playing his teammate, but he didn't know where they were coming from. All right, good double lift, but he still needs to bring the adapts in position, by the way. Nine probes though, it's honestly not a bad. One more hit, he gets one more, makes it 11. Hmm. Are we happy with 11 probes if we are Nikorok? I kind of want to say we are. Now we're only down two workers, we know about the Phoenix, we know about the Oracle. We have a Liberator. Good siege up here to deny the third, it's not going to do that. Instead he's going to fly the Liberator over the Stalkers, don't do that. But lips are quick, Phoenixes though are even quicker. Be a real shame if this Liberator dies for nothing. There is a tank. The tank could get lifted, but there is a decent amount of Marines. There is a Cyclone. I don't think Art can accomplish a whole lot here. <laughs> yeah. You're probably not the only one in that regard, though, Tresipo. It's okay, mate. We're going to get uh, Romania and then we get Revenge on Austria. We're going to let the Shade finish off, but the Oracle is going to get picked off very, very quickly. Phoenix is now lifting that tank. I don't really love this attack by Art, man. I just feel like Art's army is not good enough to justify this stuff. What was that trade, guys? What did we get here? Four Marines for an Oracle, a Stalker, a couple of Adepts. Yeah, this wasn't it. I really don't think this was it. Polish Art is in trouble. If somebody uh, uses... Uh, Legalak, could you guys tell me in a best of five prediction game between Nikarak and Art, what does Legalak say? I'm actually kind of curious about it now. I would say that Legalak says it's like 60 or 62% in favor of Art. He lifted his own adept. Uh, something that happens to the best of us. Yeah, that does not help. But I think even if he executes that perfectly, I just don't think there is that much you can gain there. Oh my goodness. Is it 61.8? All right, guys, you got me. I'm exposed. I am a legal luck. <laughs> I swear on everything I have in life, I did not check that. 
That is just kind of what I thought would be the uh, prediction approximately. I swear and I promise that I did not pr uh, look that up. <laughs> That's sick. Human AI. That is actually a godlike guess. But I would have also told you that I'm going to disagree with Arligalak. And I think it's closer than that. That was just my prediction for Arligalak. But that's just because I have been bopped so many times by Nikodak. I know his power. <laughs> and I've watched him a lot. And as I said in the beginning of this series. I've invited him quite a few times. But I, uh, he's just so eager. He plays so much. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I didn't look at the historic head-to-head uh, -head either or something to start. I, I did not even open a league. Like most of the time when I do matchmaking, I don't even check. The only time I ever check their historic head-to-head -head is if I wonder if I already let them play once in the big ring bouts. And I don't want to do that unless I have a good reason for it. Anyway, we've got a lot of Zealots here. Zealots near Battery Overcharge are incredibly good. Away from Battery Overcharge, they are good with a sh Guardian Shield. How long will that Guardian Shield last? Apparently a pretty damn long time. This is actually looking pretty damn good for Art. Art takes one of the better fights that I think he could have ever taken. And we have to thank the battery, but there is a Liberator, I believe, sieging up in the main base. Uh, justice! Justice reigns from above! One more probe. Ah, I could have let it see. So the fight goes well for Art, but he does lose a couple workers in the back of it. And obviously, like, his stack is still a little bit underdeveloped. I think this is a very even game still. If anything, I might still like it a little bit for Nikarak. I don't know about this, by the way, but it's okay. Just gonna pretend that that did not happen. Hmm. I mean, Diabolus, I think there is a, a difference between like Euros or some tiny esports events right but that's a conversation for a different day i don't want to have that conversation while i'm casting the bbb because it goes on for a long time there's a lot of back and forth but uh, maybe one day guys i'll retire and then i'll live that life but until then it's just the euros that are getting the best of me because they don't score any goals that's annoying funny that artist follow-up here by the way is storm i don't know uh Felt like Colossus would be better, but maybe he felt he just needed a quick Archon to survive, and that Archon was pretty useful, to be fair. Hmm. A lot of people are actually blaming Pep Guardiola for ruining football. And I was like, this has to be a joke, right? But then I read more comments, and they were actually very serious. Huh. No, never, J-Life. Come on, mate. Now that is a crime, mate. That is a punishable offense in this channel. <laughs> Don't tilt me. Nikodak needs to be careful. He's got Ghost out. He's got a few more on the way. And that's obviously fine now. Now we do have that Colossus transition on the side of Art. Second robe and the robe away. Yeah, what I wanted to say uh, earlier. Is that the only time I ever check. How players have done against each other if I think of a match that I want to make for the Friday night. It's just like, did I already make them play once against each other? And sometimes it was like Roddy Shark Knight or something that I did in the past with the Team Roddy Kids. I was like, ah, okay, then it's fine. But there are also some moments where I was like, hey, this would be fun in the Big Brain Bouts. And then I realized that they played against each other like 12 weeks ago. And I was like, huh, I guess I don't remember every match because <laughs> then I just completely forgot. Yeah, I know, Andrew. I thought that was robbery. I mean, I was literally casting Home Story Cup at that point. So I wasn't mega focused on the game, but Todd put it on the monitor and on the TV. So I was watching a little bit. And I was like, yay, we scored. I was like, what? We didn't? And I was like, oh, come on. There was like, there were zero complaints on the side of the French. That seemed like a pretty valid goal. It's Basilisk Discord. All one word, mate. Oh yeah, Basilisk Discord. All one word. There you get the link. Exclamation mark Discord will link you to mine. Exclamation mark Basilisk Discord links you to the Basilisk Discord. I guess I can just combine the two. Maybe I'll do that. Instead of two different links. Ravi! Don't make me talk about that best of five again. Banger PVZ. 
Has, has Ravi ever played in the BBB? <laughs> I haven't heard your thoughts on Usyk. I think uh, Usyk got a well-deserved victory there. I think he won. It's a while ago, though. Micro is going to be very important here. War Prism is going to be very important. Art pulls at Prism all the way back to the left. Four Colossus is a very high amount of Colossus. Phoenix is coming in from the top right. I never really hate a single EMP on the Phoenix. It's a good Micro by Art in this fight. Eventually, Nikorok is going to have to stand there and take the fight. He kills every single Phoenix. A few more Pikes show up, but the War Prism is looking for some big storms. But actually, the Prism dies immediately. Only a single High Temple comes out. Does drop one more storm. But now Nikorok turns around and says, It's my time. And I would have loved to see him change that army. But he doesn't because there are Zealots on top of his uh, third base. He could really see. He thought about it uh, and he decided against it. Maybe if that one High Templar didn't get off the final storm, he would have continued the chase there. Hmm. When you were at the Home Story Cup, getting the trophies, did you think they might bring up the music video you were in? No. I didn't really think about it. Even though I did have Dennis call, uh, call me once. When Dennis had a late night stream on his own channel, live with the German audience. Somehow somebody brought up that video and even though Dennis has been a lifelong friend he had apparently never seen it because he just doesn't spend any time on Reddit or something. So he's like, what Kev? What? What? What is this? And I was like, oh, come on Dennis, it's old Niels mate. No, I didn't. I wasn't too worried about it. I don't think it has anything to do with the Home Story Cup either. Then again, I guess Tots, he, Tots complains about uh, the heat. Didn't have much to do with it either. Didn't think about it, wouldn't be worried about it either. We had the Lenovo commercial, we had the Razer ad, we had the music video. You do some things, guys. Does it really matter? Five Colossus and a couple of them are kind of better than Bruce. The Novas don't connect. That Blink is there to take care of all the Vikings. But since these Colossus are so low on HP, they might actually die all very, very quickly. And the Marines and Marauders should be able to do their thing. But the War Prism in the back is just warping in so many additional units. It's plus three attack, plus two armor for Art. As Nikorok is forced to go all the way back into his natural. But Nikorok does have a counter. And we actually have a tiny recall. Uh, Marauders would have wiped the floor with an army, by the way. Oh, boy. Oh boy, is Art lucky that Nikorok didn't just blindly stim in there because he would have absolutely decimated those six stalkers. And now instead this turns into a massive W4. Oh, that's so funny. This is one of these moments, guys, where if Nikorok just actually clicks in, he kills every single stalker here in no time, or at least forces them to blink away, then you kill the probes you can pick up and you can put these units here. Now instead, out of respect, he runs back and he gets swallowed up and he loses everything for nothing. Atalamaska, I'm happy if we have heat in Star Azogara. Because I know some people are more worried about rain. Since it's an outdoor StarCraft event. If it starts raining, it's going to be awkward. Art says the Planetary Fortress ain't awkward at all. I can fight. It's going to love splash damage coming in from the top left. And the PF dies. Oh, oh, oh. Poor Nikorak. Now that Nova actually finds a connection too. And that will do it. It's still Art. After what felt like was a bad start. Losing 11 probes to the Hellion drop. And a failed Oracle Adept a Phoenix counter who takes the 2-1 lead. It all started with a battery overcharge and a couple charged zealots and a great guardian shield. And a man hanging in there. Uh, Nikorok actually got really unlucky there twice. Especially with the Marauders towards the end. That was not a great recall. And it just worked out. At that point you may as well just fake recall a probe and hope he runs away. I feel like I saw people do that at Home Story Cup. Where they know a drop is coming and they just like recall one probe to the Nexus. And they give them the idea that an entire army is being recalled and the animation scares them. That's kind of what happened there. Oh. Hello, Jigatil Dipson. You know, Steinboken, even though I think boxing is awesome, it does often seem like it's there's so little that's happening over in boxing. 
And then they finally have a fight, and then one guy wins, but then the other guy said, I didn't lose, so we're going to do a rematch. And then six months from now, then Fury wins, and then they have to do another one seven months later because it's 1-1. One, one. That's like two years have gone by, and I watched three fights. <laughs> it's pretty boring in that regard. Round four. Round four. Fight. In the top left side. We are looking at the main base of our Russian Terran playing a very good series so far. Unfortunately, still down 1 2. But I always enjoy watching him. It's Platinum, Heroes, and Nicaragua. Bottom left side, a man who's showing us a little bit of everything. We've seen some Stargate, we've seen some Twilight, we've seen Robo first, even Nexus first. He's having a good time and he's getting the results that he's looking for. Polish Protoss Art. Not to be confused with the Russian Protoss Play Art. Also, Wrapping the Platinum Heroes. Somebody else asked, what's next? Well, obviously first game four. Hopefully our second game five. If there is no game five, then we get ready for the main event of the evening. Moja versus a sword of. Well, my passion for uh, UFC has gone down a lot, Steinboken. There was a time that I was incredibly hyped for this card and that card and I love that fighter and that fighter and there's so little of that at the moment. I will obviously still watch some of the epic nights but I feel that UFC suffered from the same thing that StarCraft suffered from at one point where every single weekend you had the best players fighting against each other and it becomes a lot less special. Now obviously in UFC you don't necessarily have that but they just have too many events. Uh, it's too much. <laughs> and then there's like a whole bunch of guys that I don't know anything about. And I just uh, lost a little bit of my UFC passion. There are some nights right now that go by where I don't even watch back a single fight. Not even the main event. Obviously the pay-per-view events, I'll watch it back. But it's uh, not as exciting for me as it used to be. But it might come again. Conor McGregor can stop hurting his toe, guys. Woo! We're so back. <laughs> no. Back to back eBay blocks here for uh, Nikarak, but Art is not gonna expand elsewhere. He says, nope, this is the base I want, and this is the base I'm gonna get. If this Reaper, by the way, is able to prevent the next from going down and getting the probe, that would be a great start for Nikarak. Oh, you gotta love that. No, you don't wanna lose it too quickly, but he does scout the Stargate. Is there a world where he can live? Nah, he's gonna die, right? Yeah, he's gonna die. It's okay. Still a great start. Nate Diaz was always Roddy's favorite. I do like Diaz, just because he was exciting. And there's still plenty of guys in UFC I find exciting. but It's, uh... I don't know. A couple of my favorite fighters retired, semi-retired. Over the last few years, Hamzat was the one I was really looking forward to. And he just never, ever, ever fights. And if you have favorites and they just never fight, it becomes a bit dull. But I'm sure there will be some nights that I get excited about again in the future. Cool opening here, by the way, by Nikrok. As it's Barracks Factory, two more racks. I actually like this. Gonna give you a lot of units. Gives him great pushing potential too. I do like those two guys, by the way. Yeah, baddies. I don't know, man. I'm done predicting against Alex Pereira. He just always seems to win. So... <laughs> But I, I think Yiri is awesome. I actually, uh, I really like him. He's special, he's crazy, but I think he's awesome. Mm. Unfortunately for Nikarok, all of his units were in the natural, which I find a little bit surprising. Or he was just relying on this Cyclone. It does get the lock on, but won't get the kill because the Oracle is a bit quicker. It's four SUVs and a lot of lost mining time. Well, so much for that great start. I guess he didn't really expect that Oracle to show up so quick, but he should have known that Art was obviously going to go double gas because the Nexus was blocked for so long and he saw with that Reaper that that Stargate was here. But it's okay. I still don't hate it for Art Terran, but obviously cannot afford to lose any more SUVs. No, the Oracle moves. Excuse me, the Cyclone moved a little bit, but now actually the Oracle misclicks. 
And one Oracle might die if Marines hop out. Marines! Ah, without Steven. Plus one, they're so underwhelming or without any upgrades. Gets a few more hits, so at least it's nice to drop an Oracle this low in HP. I don't know about the quick zealot charge here, by the way. I feel like that's mega ambitious. I'd probably think like, hey, it worked on side delta. I'm going to do it again. Hmm. Starport on the way for uh, Mr. Nicarakt. But we have a... I guess this pine will allow you to warp in barely on this side, even if it's just like one or two. That's kind of cool. Nothing worse than going for an all-out important move out as a Terran play, and then right when you're in the center of the map, four zealots show up in your natural. And you're wondering where the hell did those came from? Oracles are actually able to kill a lot of SCVs here. Nikarak, oh, he turns around. Why turn around? Turns around with everything. Now, actually, I don't know why Art started attacking an orbital. That seems a little bit ambitious. So, kills three SCVs and causes more lost mining time. But he does lose an Oracle. Why did Nikarak just go home? I don't get it. Man, your army is so good right now. Like, why are you so afraid of a single Oracle? Oh, he's just waiting for the Metafax, perhaps? Economically, this game is not looking that hot. What I like about Nikarak is how powerful his army is right now. Uh, Rexy! Thank you, Rexy. You're a very sweet man. Make sure to cheer for us on Tuesday, even though we don't need it. I'm gonna absolutely destroy Romania. But... Are you gonna stop by, Rexy? Is it happening? And how's Lino as a host? Is he good to you? Well, sad because Nikarak is not attacking, that's why. Uh, if he's not attacking, seems to be a bit paranoid. Obviously, there is 100 bucks on the line for this best of five. Loser gets 25 buckies. That is the way we always do it in the co main event of the BBB. And uh, maybe uh, Nikarak just doesn't want to throw, really wants to win. But sometimes, by being so afraid to throw, you actually make your own life so hard. This should have been such a good game for Nikarak, and now I feel like it just looks great for Art. The man's got Zealot Charge, he's getting all the gates, he's economically ahead, he's got Storm. Oh. Having the best time. Happy to hear. Are you still there uh, to take care of Lino's tears tomorrow? When Denmark shows up in a big way and is going to put a serious beating on Deutschland. My Amigo needs a shoulder to cry on at that point. I mean, Angie's just focused on the Copa America, so... I, I hope you can still beat that for Lino. He's going to need it. <laughs> the Zealot and a scouting pilot is going to give Art a heads up that this double drop is happening. One Oracle still roaming the center of... Ooh, needs to be careful. NG is Colombian. They're pretty good. Winning their game so far. What do we do? If we are Nicarak to just double starboard and pray? We have single starboard at the moment. And it feels that we need a second starport. Nikodok throws down the scan. Actually pretty good, Leroy. Not the highest level of StarCraft, but they were good. I mean, the first one was proper community StarCraft. But I think it was fun. We had its moments. Second one was obviously pretty high level and, and also good. Definitely has not been a bad set of games so far tonight. We are getting closer to those eSports World Cup qualifiers and obviously those are going to be omega important because basically if you make it through that qualifier you guarantee yourselves $15,000. You can go to Saudi Arabia and lose every single game and you still get 15k. So 
Obviously, I cannot really ask any of the guys that are going to be playing in that 20. It is done. Ian Blow 3 to 2. Hydra 2 0 lead. Alistori win game 3 and 4. Hydra win game 5. I think there is a slight bug on the uh, on the page of the BBB, so you have to go right click and back, and then it works better. It has something to do with what we did back then with the 25th anniversary edition that had its own page, then was included in the other pages, and there's basically like two tabs running simultaneously. I don't know. I don't understand Wikipedia. Rackstar can explain it, but there is something a bit strange about the Basilisk page. It works. But it doesn't totally work properly. Aye. That doesn't really work for Nikodak either. As art with an excellent blink to the low ground kills the Medivac. Can we at least kill the War Prism? Prism dies as the two Vikings show up, so that is something, but I don't really love this game for Nikodak. I used to love it. Not anymore. Fell in and out of love. He still got a shot. Mm -hmm. I love the free Bastilus head. You gave me a dream, Agrodi. I've been wearing it constantly. We love hearing that. I love my shorts. I got some extra polos. I really like the polo. Trigger was wearing it as well the first day at Home Story Cup. I was like, ah, oh, Trigger, no, no player jersey. Your staff now. And he said, like, oh yeah, this polo is so nice. <laughs> I was like, I know, mate. I know. They're very comfy. It's great material. Sell me a shirt. Soon TM. Exclamation mark. Basilisk Discord. You keep on letting them know that you guys want to buy some shirts. Eventually, one day, there should be an opportunity for you guys to wear a shirt. Roddy, when will Battle Aces release Missed All Keys? I don't know when the game comes out, but I still have keys, mate. I have plenty of keys. If you guys want, I can post 10 keys of Battle Aces in the chat after this game. And you can redeem them and start playing. But we'll worry about that after this game is over. Because this army may be overstimmed, but it's still going to pack a punch. And the two Medivac actually managed to get out of here. Eventually, they are kind of stuck. Alright. Why well, Void Ray? Art was already transitioning for the proper late game. You love the free Bastos hoodie? Do you have one or are you memeing? Oh, all the splash damage units, a couple of Novas went off, High Templars landed some storms. Another disruptors move commanding. Nikrok has so much supply tied up in the bottom side, but hey, look at them. Last three Marauders, look at the Vikings. What a chaotic fight over here, but Art is going to lose the vast majority of his splash damage units. So focused on trying to kill these two Metavacs that we kind of missed what is happening now where our SCV is dying. More Zealot run by. All out splash damage, all out surrounds in the center of the map, and that actually went reasonable for the man who is seriously behind in upgrades. Void Ray has done its thing. How many kills? One, but I guess the cannon got one as well. So Artist Supply does take a hit after those two full Metavex died. Great fight for Nikarak, but considering the state of the game, Art being on a million freaking bases, having a Stargate, having great upgrades, I don't think it's quite good enough. Hmm. He kind of bastard a sticker. He's only on 65 probes. Something on my on my mouse pad. I don't know what it is. Dust. A recall. Is it a real recall? It is a real recall. A few more zealots storming into the natural. I mean, double force, double double, double stargate. I, I like to think that Art is still cooking, but he obviously needs to start cleaning it up and stop donating units for a little bit. Colorful dragons arrived. They arrived today. Vicky has spent extra money. She couldn't wait. <laughs> Apparently the white dragon was not enough. We needed more dragons in my house. The dragon is called Jakiro. Shout out to Arteezy. <laughs> Two more immortals on the way. <laughs> so I gave you a Rainer player card. I've got the big one. That oh, the Nova is sweet as the Void Ray died to the Vikings. R does land a picture perfect Nova. I mean, Nikodak is still up in the supplies, but I do kind of feel like he is struggling. 
struggling in this match. We can't recall. Coco's second recall is not quite available. Where is Coco, by the way, guys? I haven't seen Coco all day. Oh my goodness, we're moved commanding all to disrupt us. And maybe one or two. Oh my god, the Novas do somehow go off. What on earth is happening over here? Move commanding all the splash damage units, and somehow the balls still go boom. That makes it good enough for Art in the end, even though that should have been a disaster. Now we've got a battery overcharge, saving him on the left side. Here's Luis. Art blinks forward. Just when Nikrok had a massive opening, he couldn't quite capitalize on it. What a messy game. 17.3 against 16.7k resources going down as Nikrok is just battling his heart out, trying to send us to everyone's favorite at game 5. Art probably having a proper scare at this point where he's like, all right, I need to stop playing silly. I need to stop being derpy. And let's just go ahead and slow things down. Guys, he has no extended thermal lens. He's building Colossus number three at this point, and he has no extended thermal lens. And I don't think he's going to realize up to the point where he's going to take a fight. And he's probably going to lose the next fight too. I mean, upgrades will still favor him. Plus three, plus two, now drops a fleet beacon. Maybe some carriers down the line. As Nikorak is shocking the left side of MV on a 17 minute game, game four of our co-main event. It's been a great series between these two. Can't say it's been underwhelming or disappointing. We still have an entire best of five to go behind this, guys. Moja versus Sword of, and Sword of gets another chance. And Moja obviously gets rewarded for his great home story cup performance. Where the man played some absolute certified bangers. Speaking of certified bangers, Reyna's got a flight in three hours. What are the odds that Reyna makes his flight and actually brings all of his belongings? I'm concerned. Final night in Korea. I think at the bare minimum we're, we are forgetting either a hoodie or a phone charger. I think the kid's got this, not his first word here. Yeah. I don't think this kid has anything. It's nice that Bully's on his side. You know, I, I trust Bully a little bit more, but <laughs> no cancel on this Nexus, by the way. Guys, this col these Colossus don't have extended thermal lens. I think Art is going to take a really rough fight soon. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's an EMP lens from the high ground. Vikings doing their thing. One Colossus already melts. Did Art realize? I don't think he realized. That man is no better than Scotty. As the next on the left side got killed, Nikrok is truly clung his way back into this game, and he has played incredibly well. Obviously, he's been a bit of a clown fiesta with massive mistakes on both sides, but... Carriers, then? The carriers need upgrades. I'm sure Rain has got phone charges in Italy, so we don't have to worry about that. But <laughs> I am worried. Big recall perhaps here by Ard. How big is it? Oh, this is not that big at all. And this time around, Nikorok stands his ground and he fights and he kills the Disruptor, kills the Colossus. The reinforcements on the left, though, and those are actually pretty useful. The Vikings land. Is that the play? That's an expensive play. I mean, it kills an Immortal, but we also lose all the Vikings. Holy hell, what the hell is happening? Both players actually floating money now. That's not something you normally see with guys at this level. This artist like, man, my Colossus suck. I need more of them. Uh, well, we might want to get that one upgrade. Stalk it right by. All right. Looking for a ghost. Just the funniest fights everywhere I look. Four stalkers and an Archon attacking a command center at 3 o'clock on Amphion. Literally a sentence I have never said before and I probably will never repeat. And they're casually going to get the kill. Nikrak has been, I want to say, somewhat broke throughout certain phases of this game, but you know, eventually it starts looking better. So now even he can afford the plus three attack, plus three armor. Do we have advanced ballistics? No, but we do have ship weapons. Plus three armor finishing up for Art now as well. Carriers might carry. But for these carriers to be very impactful, we're going to need some uh, bigger upgrades. We're going to need some splash damage support. And obviously these Colossus guys, they still suck. They are going to be exposed. Shield battery overcharge. Did he realize? No, no, he did not realize. 
Poor Art. Art is just never, ever, ever going to build some Colossus. That are actually meaningful. Now, Nikrak building three more command centers. He's like, oh, cool, by the way, we're macroing, right? <laughs> 27k resources going down on our side, 25k on the side of Nikarak. Sort of, and uh, Mojo probably watching, like, Roddy, you said 9 p.m. I was like, I know. Most of the time, we even start a little bit before 9 p.m. Not tonight. Turbo bangers all around as Art is going to make a move for this command center on the right side for the second time. Did he now realize he has no turbulence? Or have we just gone past the point of carry? Two extra stoppers on the way. Gotta be careful. Stalker's still on cooldown when it comes to blink for a split second. Somehow that storm does not connect with the observer. 51 SCVs have gone down against only 25 probes. 25 probes actually ain't all that many. For how crazy and hectic and chaotic this game has been, I don't think 25 probes is that much. EMPs are massive all over this Protoss army. Decent amount of Marines in the mix as well. Intercept count is only at 19. Colossus turn around to 5, but they've got no range, so they will just die immediately. And Nikrok takes an absolutely fantastic fight, and he keeps on stimming, baby, and he kills two carriers, make it 3, and he gets off 4. You're gonna be more than happy. Come on, now keep pushing, mate. Can we not slow things down? You just killed two Colossus, an Immortal, a Disruptor, and four freaking carriers. Yeah, there are a few zealous and stalkers annoying on the left side. Who cares about that? Rally all of your reinforce. Don't turn around with this army. No, that would be a mistake. Just deal with this with your reinforcements and go. Hmm? <laughs> uh, he's normally pretty YOLO in uh, TVP as well. But he probably felt that he was very far behind at one point, so he had to slow it down. But now we gotta go, mate. No, we gotta go. No, I wanna get to game five. Oh my goodness, he leaves all the ghosts behind Oh, well. We're gonna get a base. There's one I Templar here to storm. Uh, oh, this army sucks right now. He's on 20 zealots. He's like, no, Roddy, I'm gonna be on 25 zealots. Fine, you're on 25 zealots. Get a body ship too. Nikarak killed his base. He's under attack. Oh my goodness, Art suddenly has an army again. Did Nikarak just give Art a chance to get back into this game? Art had nothing, man. After he lost all the entire army in the top right, he really had nothing. How much supply in Medivac at the moment? 22. I'm making four more. Okay, that might actually become a problem. 15 Medivacs. 15. 9 DTs. And we've got Shadow Stride. Oh my goodness. Nikorok. We took the best fight that we're ever going to take against Colossus and Carriers on the right side. He had some Liberators to be fair. They got picked off. All three of them. 15 medevac. He just doesn't want to research the medevac upgrade, guys. 9 DTs with 3, 3, 2 upgrade. Oh, Planetary actually sees them. Hey, that's a great heads up. How many Vikings? 18. <laughs> that man has a... Oh, my God. Here come the DTs. Can we repair? We would have repaired immediately. Maybe we had a chance, but I guess he didn't see it earlier. Uh, uh, oh. Oh, Nikarok, I'm afraid he's kind of throwing. But now, every time that I think he's afraid of throwing, Art makes a questionable fight too. But there are some Novas. Can these Novas connect? The first one kind of does. The other two, they don't. Planetary Fortress is very close to finishing up. Can the Vikings land, maybe? If we have 18 Vikings. Repair your PF. Repair your PF. We do have a nice army in the bottom left side, so we have base trading. This is an absolutely ridiculous game. For the third time, this base is going to die. Not before it kills the Disrupted, though. A PF is not gonna back down from a fight. We also have DTs walking around everywhere. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Second planetary is actually going to be attacked by everything. DTs still coming in from the left as well, so that one dies very quickly too. And the army supplies are now very close, and that's gonna favor the guy who does not have 30 supply in Metavex. I mean, Metavex are great guys, but I don't know if we really need 30 supply. Oh, oh, Nikarak. We should have had a game five, my friend. I mean, obviously, he was dead. He was winning. He was losing. He was winning. He was losing. But after this fight, come on. You, you got to send it at that point. We are not turning around for five stalkers and four zealots. 
Uh, uh, uh. Unlucky. He still has a chance though. We ain't there yet. Five orbitals. Gonna get a cancel on this Nexus. What is Artist Army? Seven Disruptors and three High Templars. All we need is one more move command. <laughs> All we need is one more move command. Mm, Rico. Ooh, that's a lot of DTs dying. Four out of six, I believe. Yeah, only two of them survived. Terran and EMP. Alright. Now Art is ready to throw away some gateway units. But I probably think all it takes is one big ball. These fights are going to be hard to catch because of all these meta effects. Make it really hard to see what's actually happening. There's a Nova! Oh, these are good Novas. Nikro still has an army supply lead though. There are Zelvots and DTs. I think we're just Zelvots on the left side. Let's go ahead and take a look. Oh, it's just DTs. This is never a good feeling as a Terran. If you just saw a recall and you, you killed like four DTs, and you see ten more, you're like, oh, he's rich, isn't he? <laughs> 27 minutes. Friday night uh, video gaming brought to you guys by Basilisk. Nikarok down to 26 workers as he's gonna try to gun down a couple of the Novas. Honestly, some of the Zealots blown up. Nikarok takes another absolutely fantastic fight as the Novas blew up the Zealots. And the man just stands there and guns down every single disruptor. And now he's once more distracted by Zealots and DTs on the left side. A second god here fight. And he's down to 15 workers though. And it's the Zealots and the DTs that just kind of feel like they are becoming overwhelming. We have a few more units showing up. I mean, Art is still rich, has 71 workers, and just never really seems to be running out of steam. Vikings are going to land. If we can kill all of this, I don't think that we can actually blink away. We can maybe with one or two, but all but one DT has gone down. Can Nikrok do something with his tiny, tiny army in the bottom right? He makes the correct call there by killing the battery, but he can't stick around. Now he's going to... <laughs> I Templar auto-attack. Alright, basically he lost all of his stock because he doesn't really have any mobile anti-air. Now this army of Nikra actually looks pretty sick. We still have 40 Metafax, baby. <laughs> no, Art is the one who's actually gonna lose a lot of workers, and he could be very well in a bit of a little bit of trouble. As Starkers did get warped in in the bottom right, but Art is derping as he was trying to defend that center base. So that Stalker warping was a little bit derpy. Colossus number seven, I believe, without extended terminal lens. No, number six shows up. Oh, this is painful though. There is no sweet spot there for the Metavex. Two out of three Metavex go down. This one is going to make it to safety. One more Zealot storms in. How many orbitals are left? Four, actually. This, this is a game, guys. <laughs> this absolutely is a video game. A hundred bucks for the winner, 25 for the loser. Things are starting to look rough for Nikarok, but it has looked rough before. This also looked great. None of it really mattered. Can we snipe this Nexus? One EMP is going for the probes instead, but there's still so many probes remaining. We will not stick around, and this will actually be it. GG, after 29 minutes, it is Platinum Heroes Art who gets the 3 1 victory over his teammate. 100 buckies go to Art, 25 buckies go to Nikrak. Banger series, and a turbo banger over game 3. That was definitely painful, but incredibly fun to watch. We'll settle that prediction. And get ready for the main event. Obviously, I need a little break. Dragon. It's my new dragon. It's Jakiro. Obviously, he's going to be very good friends with the white dragon. It got released today. Vicky paid for express shipping because it was incredibly important that we got it immediately. So, he got the blue one. I got the orange one. It's a great dragon. Jakiro is my new buddy. All right. There's something else I wanted to show you guys. All these uh, alerts queued up, by the way, because I have my alerts disabled on my mainstream. Oh, you guys actually voted for Nikrok. Does anybody know what you guys voted for in Hydra against... Uh, what is it called? Aristori? Because if Aristori was the favorite there, then actually it would be three out of three underdogs. Hmm. Why do you throw away like that? Babe, it's a dragon. He can fly. I don't know, maybe your dragon can't fly yet, but my dragon can fly. Nikarok, uh, Art. Art wins. 
All right, uh, main event, uh, BBB number 63. Can you guys believe it? Moja versus Sort of. I'll tell you guys all about why we went for this main event. Uh, mm. It's going to be TVZ, everyone's favorite matchup, right? You guys got 10 minutes. Obviously, it's a 200 buckies uh, series, 150, 150 split. Okay, that doesn't fit, but. Uh, you guys get the drill. We'll do it like this. Now everybody knows what everyone's playing for. I'm going to start this prediction. I'm going to take a little break. And by the time that I come back, we can get ready for our TVZ. Starting 35 to 40 minutes behind schedule. But hey, we just watched some awesome TVPs. Big shout out to Nicarok and Art for putting on that show. Yeah. I hope they're happy with it. I'm sure Nicarok would have been happier with a win. Absolutely had chances to win. But it is what it is. Starcraft is a hard game. Protoss is good. Tiny break, guys. See you in a couple minutes. One more best of five to wrap it up.